This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So what we've got in terms of going into the notes and looking at it from a lessor's perspective, we need to look at it from a finance lease and an operating lease perspective. Now, for those of you who have done previous studies using the old standard, you will be comfortable with the idea of this finance lease and this operating lease. What we have there is that the lease is a finance lease if the risks and rewards of ownership are transferred to the lessee. OK, so when we're looking at the risk, we're looking there uh, at the risk of the asset breaking down, uh, the risk of the asset becoming obsolete. Uh, the rewards we're looking there at being able to get the majority of the economic benefits from the assets use. Now, if those rewards are transferred to the lessee, so let's just go back to our diagram there. Those rewards are transferred to the lessee. They are going from company A to company B. OK, so the risks and rewards are moving to the lessee, company B. OK, we as company A, the lessor, no longer have any of the risks or any of the rewards. If that's the case, then the lease that we have is a finance lease. OK, and when we look at it as a finance lease, as the risks and rewards have gone from the lessor to the lessee, that means in substance, we no longer control the asset. So we're going to have to go through and de-recognize that asset. And when we de-recognize the asset, we're going to have to show those future rental payments. So the income that we're going to receive as a receivable. But more of that a little bit later on in the separate finance lease lessor accounting video. OK, but the key bit is that if the risks and rewards have gone to the lessee, we de-recognize the asset and recognize the receivable. OK. Uh, so what scenarios give rise to the transfer of the risks and rewards of ownership? Well, again, back to the notes and what you've got there uh, is if we go through there and have a look at all the five different ones, I, I gather my pen. Uh, the first one there is that ownership passes at the end of the lease term. So if the, the end of the lease term, uh, the lessor okay, transfers the ownership to the lessee, then the lessee is going to have the asset for its entire life. Okay, therefore. It's going to have all the rewards. It's going to get most of the risks from using the asset. So it's no longer our asset. It's no longer the lessor's asset. So we will treat it as a finance lease right from the very start. OK, uh, the second one there, there is an option to purchase the asset. So at the end of the lease period, uh, the lessee can buy the asset at below fair value. So for less than what it is expected to be worth. And we're pretty sure that that will happen. You know, it makes economic sense, doesn't it? You know, if you still think you can get benefit or use from that asset and you can pay less than what it's worth, you may as well buy it, mightn't we? OK, it, it's sensible from an economic perspective, isn't it? OK, so therefore, as the lessee, you will have that asset for its entire life. So therefore, you're going to consume the reward. You're going to suffer the risk. So therefore, we will treat it as a finance lease again from the start of the lease term. OK, so both of those, even though the ownership transfers legally at the end of the lease, we treat it as having been transferred from the start of the lease from an accounting perspective. OK, uh, the third one that you've got there. Again, it's very subjective and I know we're trying to get rid of subjectivity from these accounting standards. But here, there's still a little bit of subjectivity in that the lease term represents the major part of the asset's life. OK, again, the asset's economic or useful life using old dictionary terms. Again, if you're using the asset for most of its life, again, it could be seven years out of eight, six years out of eight. Is it five years out of eight? You know, that's where the the judgment comes in, then it will be a finance lease again, because you're transferring the risks and rewards of ownership to the lessee. OK, uh, the fourth one down uh, is the one that we'll see in a moment or in, the, in the next videos uh, is that the present value of the minimum lease payment ooh, discounting uh, represents substantially all the assets fair value. So. 
in substance if what you are paying for the asset over the period of time so what the lessee is paying to the lessor over the lease period if that is essentially the value of the asset then you are paying for the value of that asset aren't we and if you are paying for the value of that asset effectively it's because it's your asset isn't it okay so again we will treat it as a finance lease and from the lessor's perspective de recognize the asset and recognize a receivable and then the last one there at the bottom is that the asset being leased between the lessor and the lessee is specialized in nature if it's specialized in nature that means that only the lessee can use the asset due to its specialized nature and therefore the lessee will have the risks the lessee will have the rewards and if those risks and rewards are transferred to the lessee then yes you're right it is an finance lease isn't it okay excellent there we go so you need to be on the lookout for those scenarios in any narrative style question if it's computational you'll be told that it is a finance lease but in a narrative style question you're going to have to go through and identify any of those scenarios or a combination of those scenarios begs the question doesn't it what's an operating lease okay are the criteria for an operating lease similar to what we have there with regards to the finance lease? The answer, quite simply, is no. Okay, there's no criteria. There's only two types of lease finance lease and an operating lease. Okay, from a, a lessor accounting perspective. So if we decide that it's not a finance lease, it has to be an operating lease, doesn't it? There's, there's no choice. It's not as if there's a, there's a third type of lease or a fourth type of lease. Two leases. If it's a finance lease, treat it as a finance lease for lessor accounting. If it isn't a finance lease, it has to be an operating lease. So there, as it says, an operating lease is any other lease other than a financing lease. So effectively, what we have there is that the risks and rewards have not been transferred to the lessee the risks and rewards remain with the lessor so from an accounting perspective if you have the risks and rewards you still control that asset so you continue to recognize the asset in your books and continue to depreciate it the money that you receive is going to be rental income and we will just expense that straight line over the life of the lease okay there we go any questions Throw them out there on the Ask the Tutor forum. If not, that's the end of this introduction. We'll go through and have a look in the next videos at examples of an operating lease for lesser accounting and a finance lease for lesser accounting.